Hello everybody, this is Tim from Berkshire Drop Brokers and I'm on board this Beneteau First 42 S7 from 1996 for a look around her interior with you so we can have a look together to see what there is on board, where it is, how the space flows etc and uh, to give you a really good idea of what this boat is all about. So as you can see we're looking at the companionway. Now that is nice and easy to get to, uh, into, there's quite a high lip there so that's going to stop anything coming from the cockpit in which is great. Really nice easy steps to get down which are uh, they're curved so that's going to be a little bit easier if the yacht is healing and it's also really really easy to get at the engine so we just uh, release these catches, there we go and the whole thing hinges back. Very heavy piece of kit, it's wood and fiberglass but we can release it quickly for a look at the uh, the Volvo engine in there and have a quick general check around perhaps while the boat is underway. And if you want to take the companion way completely away, I'll just uh, put her back to bed there. Um, we've got catches at the bottom as well, so where you could lift it out of the way and work on the engine if you wanted. I'll show you access to the engine via the port cabin also in one moment. But uh, as we come down the companion way, we can see we've got a nice grab rail there, one either side, very nice. And then we've got a, a grab rail there just in board of the chart table and then uh, running down the port and starboard sides of the saloon at sort of eye level and us also here by the head's door. So there's loads and loads to grab onto, including behind the seat here. So there's always something to cling on to. And if you can't find something, there's always a deep fiddle close by too. So really nice design. Now, uh, if we turn right, the first thing we come to is the starboard after cabin. And as you can see, really nice size cabin we've got an entrance vestibule which we can close uh, to get changed in private we've got a heater uh, inlet there a heater air inlet we've got access to the bilge nice double sized bed here goes a long way back and it's nice and wide as well compromise head height over the uh, far end so you'd probably want your head this end i think but uh, either way very very conventional cabin layout for a boat of this type and uh, underneath we've got stowage as well we've got a uh, little cupboard uh, outboard there and a slightly bigger cupboard outboard there. It's got some engine spares in there by the looks of it. But otherwise, uh, nice head height. We've got sockets down here, which you'd need to convert for UK if you wanted to use them in the UK. And uh, two opening windows, one inboard, one outboard. And generally, a rather pleasant aft cabin. Now, let's move out of this cabin. And we'll go and look at the nav station, or the nav area, whatever you like to call it. And as you can see, located starboard after the saloon, we've got a, a nice sized fiddled chart table here which lifts to give us lots of storage inside for knickknacks etc not many people are using their uh, paper charts in there anymore uh, we've got drawers underneath the chart table too so that's where all your knives and bits and pieces go to and a really nice transition from the uh, from the steps down and behind there and you're then finding yourselves in a forward facing nav station which i quite like nice seat there again curved for the uh, for the skipper with lots of storage beneath Stowage outboard also for bits and pieces, something there for your dividers. And then we've got the usual setup of uh, electrical switches and gauges and uh, water tank indicator, etc. Heater control, we've got Navtex fitted here, we've got a radar, we've got uh, an older type VHF and a stereo, and we've also got uh, depth, wind speed, etc. etc. And finally, behind here, we've got a Raymarine chart plotter. So, uh, pretty much everything around you to do what you need to do to get this boat from A to B in relative safety. Oh, even a red light up there too, look absolutely fantastic. So, uh, so we'll go away from the nav station and have a look at the saloon itself. If I just stand back, there we go, very nice. So we've got lots of lovely coloured wood down here and it actually seems uh, quite nice, doesn't feel too worn. Um, this boat hasn't been used in a while, so uh, she needs to get all clean and she needs to be brought back into the here and now. But uh, generally speaking, I think the woodwork looks absolutely okay to me. The uh, the upholstery here too doesn't look too bad. Could perhaps do with a launder, but I certainly don't think it needs to be replaced. So we've got nice U-shaped seating on the, on the outboard side, uh, sort of... Uh, slightly curved seating on the inboard side there stowage beneath some stowage behind as well so uh, pretty much everything you would need for a nice uh, family outing or family and friends etc if you just look over here to the starboard side we've got uh, wine glass stowage etc we've got all sorts of uh, cupboards that run all the way along the starboard side and also along the port side We've got uh, a nice window just letting a little bit of light in there or, or more like a view out as well as uh, lots of opening windows in this compartment. So we've got three starboard, two ports. So there's uh, ample 
hatchage, if that's a word, <laughs> I know it's not, don't worry, to allow uh, light in, air out, etc., etc., for, for ventilation. I would say, though, on a closer inspection, they are quite uh, delaminated, so the sun's been at work there, but uh, they're smaller windows, so perhaps they'll be easier to uh, remove. And as they're hinged, I think they could probably come off a lot easier than fixed windows to be taken away and fixed up. But let's carry on around this compartment. If we just uh, move forwards. Lovely wooden bulkhead there, another hatch letting light and air in. Just note, point to note that the headlining here is uh, GLP or moulded, so uh, that's only, only ever going to need a wipe, and it does need a wipe. Um, so no saggy headlining, etc. here, which is lovely. But let me take you for a trip forwards into the forward cabin. So here we go, I'll just start on the port side because it's the closest. As you can see, we've got another uh, chest level window there. We've got a nice big cupboard here on the port side. Seating to port, so you can sit there and uh, get yourself ready for the day ahead or the day sailing ahead. And then on the right hand side here, I'll just move forward. We can see we've got a nice big, slightly angled double bed here. Plenty of room to sit at the head end. Another chest level window there and we've got two opening hatches in here too so again lots of air and light flooding in you've got this sort of uh it's not dark with this wood on this boat uh, it is darker but it goes really really nice contrast very very nicely with the color of the deck head and the fixtures and fittings so uh i like it down here it's a very nice place to be bit of a clean around and uh, i think you'd enjoy yourself down here but let's go forwards and we'll look at the the first of two heads on this boat nice molded compartment so lots of uh, radius corners so really really nice and easy to clean uh, on the outboard side on the starboard side you can see we've got a sink with a shower attachment and a cupboard underneath we've got the toilet with a seat on it as well so if you want to shower sitting down while the boat's underway uh, you should be able to do that also and we also have a, what is really a rather unusual but quite a deep cupboard there where, where you'll see a photo of in, uh, in elsewhere in the advert it might be useful for bits and pieces but uh, uh, Benito they certainly made use of all the uh, all the spaces here for storage we've got a hatch above as well vital to let shower hot water steam out etc and then on the uh, the port side here we've got a shower we've got a cupboard underneath it and we've got a, a nice big mirror there's tim hello right then back into the main cabin we've got uh, what are possibly shoe storages here uh cupboards behind the seats uh, above and a shelf too so uh yeah lots of stowage given over to uh well lots of thought given over to stowage by benito well done them now on the port side as we go back into the cabin we've got the uh big linear galley unit there we go um what can I say? It's big. To the right hand side here, so forwards, we've got the twin sink unit. Lovely. We've got cupboards behind. Uh, we've got the window, I think I've mentioned that already. We've got the handrail above there, which, which I've mentioned already. We've got a, a chain plate coming through here as well. Great to grab on if you need to. Uh, and generally speaking, when these cupboards are on, you've got some nice work surface here. Very good. We've got the bin compartment underneath here, crockery, cutlery, pots and pans, etc. And then moving aft, we've got the gimbal cooker, two burners and a grill and an oven by the looks of it. And then the top of the fridge here, this gives you lots and lots of extra uh, preparation space. Lovely, great big deep fiddles, much deeper than we normally uh, see. Now this will stop liquids, etc., from uh, slopping from your work surfaces over to the, to the deck, etc. But that really is something I think you can hang off at sea if you need to. And if you lift this lid, really, really deep fridge there with a little freezer compartment as well. Again, needs a bit of a clean out, but once it's done, could be great for somebody. So there we go, five blankets above that. And if you just move aft along the port side, we've got the door to the day head, really conveniently located so the crew can come up and down and hop straight in there without taking salt, water, etc., into the rest of the boat. Uh, very easy to get in and out of. And to the left, you can see you have a manual head. To the right, we've got a sink unit and a cupboard and pretty much everything else is as it says on the tin. Again, radius corners. Uh, we've got hooks there, so that would probably be your... Uh, your hanging lock of your families etc and we do have a hatch there to let the uh, moisture out and the uh, possibly fumes out etc but let's not go there here we go right so into the port aft cabin and a bit of a squeeze through the door but once you're in nice big size cabin again we've got two opening windows here and uh, so that's vital for light and air nice big cupboard this is pretty much a replica of the starboard cabin so you have your cupboard here which is crammed full of all sorts of uh, safety goodies and another cupboard here uh, 
with the middle of the uh, cabin being taken up by a really lovely sized double bed there. Again, limited headroom above there, so you wouldn't be sitting up reading down there, but uh, if you're just going in here to sleep, that wouldn't be a problem. We have got uh, uh, stowage, uh, sorry, we don't have stowage under these beds. We've got a cutout there, which gives us access to the fuel tank and the gearbox outlet, the shafting, etc. And then if I just look around this corner here, you can see, I'll just close the door to cabin. There we go. So we're in it on our own. We've got a little shelf here and behind here, we've got the isolators, the fuel stop, etc. And uh, really nicely, we've got some um, access here to the port side of the engine for maintenance or for checking whilst she's running at sea. So all really rather good, huh? Right then, let's kind of open the door to that compartment. And we'll finish off by saying this has been Tim from Boatshed Yacht Brokers taking you for a whistle stop tour around this lovely 1996 Benito 42 S7. If you'd like any more information, just go to boatshedbrighton.com for lots more pictures, videos and virtual reality. Thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you again. Take care.